Hey, what's going on guys? Left Handed Shooter here. Um, I know I've been doing the Budget Hunter series videos lately, but today I'm going to do a back to my normal content. And that's discussing firearms, providing a little bit of inside overviews, reviews, whatever you want to call it, or everything else in between actually. Um, as many of you know, if you've seen my range report video one, where I cover the SIG, P365, as you guys can see, I'll slide it, or I'll lock the slide back to the rear. Nothing in there. Nothing in the magazine. So, SIG released this gun back in the beginning of this year. I think it was March time frame. And um, I was super excited, or I think it was like February time frame. I was super excited. Pre-ordered mine through Brownells, ended up canceling because my local Bass Pro got it in stock. Even though it was about forty or fifty dollars more at the Bass Pro, I said, "Screw it, I'll pay the price." It was worth having it. Took it to the range first time, put about 140, I think it was, about 140 rounds through it, all different types of ammo, different weights. You know, I had jacket at hollow points, full metal jackets, 115, 124. I think the only thing I didn't put through it was 147. Um, and it shot flawlessly, no issues with through the two 10 run mags that I got with it. One was the flush mag, one was the extended pinky mag, no problems, nothing. Everything is fantastic. So I was like, cool, perfect. This gun's gonna be awesome. I started carrying it. I, you know, got a holster from uh, Blacksmith Tactical and I started carrying it around. And then come August timeframe or late July, uh, my dad came out to visit. I was like, hey, let's go to the shooting range. So I took this one, my Glock 43 that I have here. So same thing, nothing in there. Nothing in there. I had just recently traded a VP9 because I didn't like the VP9. I traded for the Glock 43. Some of you might be like, oh, that's an awful trade. But I had traded a previous micro 9mm, which was the SIG P938 for the HK VP9. Didn't like the HK, wanted another Glock. I had been wanting the Glock 43 since it came out and just couldn't find it. Finally, some guy was willing to trade for his Glock 43 for the HK VP9. So all in all, I didn't really lose because I went from a micro to a full size back to a micro without any actual you know, money on my end or on either end for the trades. So it all worked out. So I decided to take this one. My SIG P365 and the Glock 43 to the range, a few other firearms. If you guys go back and watch the video on the range report, which was, I called it range report two, but it actually ended up being three through five because I covered these three firearms, or these two firearms and my uh, 300 blackout uh, rifle. So, took it to the range, all excited, tried out, and handed it over to my dad. Nothing but failures to eject. I think I had about five out of about 40 rounds that I attempted to put through it. So that in itself was already just kind of red flag, didn't sit well with me. So I contacted SIG, all went well. They sent me a, um, a shipping label to ship it back to them, so I did. Turnaround time was phenomenal. They had it back to me in about a week and a half. They kept it for about five business days. It showed up on a Friday, shipped out by the following Friday. Um, they gave me a list of repairs, which actually I think I have in the box. So I'll read over what they did on that gun. Yeah, here it is. All right, I'll go through the list so you guys can see. SIG, uh, what they did to it, they thoroughly inspected it, checked the receiver slide uh, to slide fit. The extractor spring tension, they checked that. They ended up replacing the extractor spring and pin. Uh, extractor hook to breech, um, they polished the barrel's transition, replaced recoil spring, and then they function tested it with 160 rounds, 40 rounds of four different uh, types of ammo. And then after that, after those 160 rounds, there was no failures to malfunction, so they sent it back. So they didn't have to do too many repairs, nothing too crazy. But um, the reason I'm doing this video primarily is one, just kind of doing a quick comparison between these two because now I actually have two micro nines to compare to but um, I'm gonna give my thoughts on the SIG P365 um, it's 
it was a great shooter for the round that it did manage to get out before I had to send it back in for warranty work. But my honest opinion, it shoots great, didn't have any issues um, for the rounds, like I said, that it did function out of. But my personal opinion, some people might hate me for this because um, there are a significant number of them that are doing fantastic, but there is also a good portion of them that had to go back to SIG for repairs and warranty work and all that, which is not something that should have happened. Um, my personal opinion, granted, I'm nobody to give decisions or give input and such. That's why I said it's just an opinion. I think SIG should have spent an additional six months doing R&D on the 365. Um, just I, There was such high demand that I can kind of see why they wanted to get the gun out there on the market. Um, it's a great gun. It's phenomenal capacity. Um, standard round or standard magazines are 10 rounders, so that means you're rolling around 10 plus one in a micro framed pistol. And the grip is just slightly wider than the Glock or the Glock 43 specifically, because that's just another nine mil. But honestly, I think they should have spent at least another six months doing R&D, getting all the tweaks and all the issues and all the hiccups cleared up before they put it out on the market. Um, their customer service was phenomenal. They acknowledged early on that they were gonna start having issues coming in with these guns. So they've been nothing but spectacular to get these things back out onto the, back out onto the hands of the owners that had already purchased them. And in doing so, they've replaced um, certain parts for the newer ones coming out. Mine has a production date of, let me check real quick. It was the 4th of February. So mine was made in the 4th of February. I picked it up, I believe it was like the first week of March, so about 30 days after its production date, I picked it up. But if you were to go to the stores right now and buy a factory new SIG 365, it would already have components that didn't come in the first production series of these guns to include, uh, they were having issues with the sights straight out of the factory when they first released. Um, the front sight was coming loose for some people. Uh, the firing pin broke for a good percentage of people. People were having failures to return to battery, failures to extract failures to eject. Um, it's just pretty much everything that a gun can fail or any component that can fail on a gun. They're having a significant amount of issues with it. Um, so that just kind of turned me off from the gun. I just got it back just the other day and I haven't taken it out to the range. But to the same day that I took the 365, I took the Glock 43 out. And you guys already know, I love Glocks. I own currently three of them. Um, as soon as I got the gun, I went ahead and ordered plus two extensions from, I believe they're Vickers Tactical. I think that's what it is. It doesn't say on there, but I got the plus two extension, so it takes it from a six to an eight plus one. So it's still a few rounds shy of the SIG P365, but my end goal with these two is going to be doing a 250 round, I'm not going to call it a torture test but just functions test to make sure that both of them are equally capable of being put into my concealed carry rotation. As of right now, the SIG is not even gonna touch a holster that's gonna get attached to my waistband anytime soon. Uh, the Glock, the same day I took the 365 out, I put about 50, 60 rounds, no issues whatsoever. And that wasn't even with the factory mags. I had put factory mags with the plus twos on them. And for all those rounds, not a single hiccup. Um, so for me, Glock, from my personal opinion, has a good track record with me, whereas opposed to SIG, does not. Um, the P938 that I had uh, traded out previously, I had some issues on uh, failure to feed and failure to extract. Um, I got those kind of kinks worked out when I went to trade it. I told the guy, I was like, hey, I do have a little bit of issues with some of the ammo. Primarily the biggest concern was 
home defense or you know hollow points of some sort, just depending on which ones it were, wasn't wasn't feeding the next round properly, so it'd get jammed up. So that was a concern. So that was SIG number one that caused a problem. I had higher hopes for the 365, and then second range trip, it's just not doing what it's supposed to, and I was kind of bothered by it. But I'm gonna put both of them to the test, put both of them through its paces. I'm gonna do two to 250 rounds, and basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna buy a bunch of different ammo in 50 round boxes, and I'm just gonna split it in half so they get equal lot, equal distribution, so I'm gonna, if, you know, whatever box of 50, 25 are going to the Glock 43, 25 are going to the Pig, uh, SIG P365, and I'm just gonna go from there. But for now, just giving you guys an update. Uh, the gun's back, they did 160 round test at SIG, didn't have any malfunctions, so we'll see. Hopefully it stays that way. And then this one, it's basically, I'm not gonna call it a breaking period, but I'm gonna put it through its paces with different ammo. I did put a couple of different types of ammo when I took it to the range, but again, it was only about 50 to 60 rounds. Um, all in all, again, this is my personal opinion. I think they should have spent more time working on this gun before they released it. It was extremely premature. And like I said, if you go out to the stores and buy a new uh, P365 with the current production date versus one that was early February production, there's going to be a significant upgrade in parts that the newer ones have that the old ones don't which just goes to show that they didn't they weren't really 100% prepared to be releasing this uh, gun but um I'll just leave it on that note um I'm not bashing SIG because I own other SIG firearms and they function flawlessly I'm specifically talking about the SIG P365 I think it was about six months premature at least and they should have kind of tested it a little bit more because the amount of things that were failing shouldn't be so common and granted I know some people are going to say hey the Glock 43 had its issues yeah I'm not disagreeing with you in that manner I'm specifically focusing on this but again before I put both of these into my carry rotation I'm going to put some rounds down range through them and I'll give you guys an update on that and that one will be probably the actual third range report from these two specifically but uh that's all I got for you guys I'm kind of trying to mix in some normal content in there with my uh budget hunter series so i'll be kind of keeping videos coming from both angles but if you guys have any questions comments concerns about either of these two firearms to what i've experienced so far how do i like them how do they shoot um go ahead drop a comment subscribe to the channel so you guys are always getting um the updated information updated videos that i'm putting out but uh that's all i got for you guys take it easy and have a good night <laughs>